Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the first part of this brand new experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if you had the perfect goalkeeper in the game. So before I have done experiments where we take a look at the best possible outfield player in the game, usually a striker to get those goal stats up. And today we're going to try the goalkeeper because this is a whole different challenge. I don't think a goalkeeper can single-handedly single -handedly carry a team to a major title. So it'll be interesting to see where this player ends up, what competitions he ends up winning, and just what his average rating is. Because for a goalkeeper to get around a 7.0 rating across the season is very, very difficult. So it'll be interesting to see if this goalkeeper can manage to do it. Now before we get into the experiment, do drop a like on the video if you like the idea behind this one and if you want to see more parts to this in the future. And also subscribe, there are experiments out every couple of days or so, so make sure you stick around for more experiments and let me know if you've got ideas for experiments down in the comments. But let's take a look at the player that we're going to be using today. You can see the club is Hartlepool United. Um, I've got a nice chrome logo pack on here. So the Hartlepool logo actually looks pretty nice here. Um, and you can see they're a team that got relegated from League 1 a couple of times and recently got relegated from League 2. So that they're now down in the Vanarama National League. In this game, Jimmy Bullard has come in as manager. I don't believe he is the manager in real life. Um, but if we have a look at their under-18 players, you can see there is a man called Scott Maloney down here. He is English and he is going to become the greatest goalkeeper in the world. You can see I've given him the perfect stats across the board. Still valued pretty lowly because the game hasn't caught up to the in-game stats here. Um, I've also increased his height to the maximum possible uh, because obviously for a goalkeeper being tall is quite important. So he's now 212 kilos but incredibly skinny at 60, uh, sorry 212 centimeters but incredibly skinny at just 69 kilograms. Um, He's got 20 for all of his goalkeeping, all of his mental, and all of his physical and technical stats. He's got 200 potential, 200 current ability in his in-game stats as well, or hidden attributes. Um, and he's a brand new player in the game, so he's got no history. This will be the start of his career. Um, now, I don't think he'll stick around. Usually when we do this kind of thing, the player moves on by usually by the summer, if not by January, and he goes to a much bigger team, will have become the number one at Hartlepool and will become the number one at one of the major teams in Europe. And they don't normally switch teams very often. I have lowered his loyalty to the lowest in the hope that he will move. But generally, when a player like this gets to a big club, they tend to stay there for the rest of their career because the club don't want to sell them and they're too expensive to buy. But let's go forward one year in time and see where Scott Maloney has ended up. Well, we are now one year into the future, and as you can see, Hartlepool finished 14th in the Vanarama National League, so our goalkeeper must not have been doing too well. You can see he's their key player here for Hartlepool, uh, and if we have a look at the senior squad, he's not actually in the senior squad, which makes no sense whatsoever. He's in the under-23s at the minute, Scott Maloney. Um, he's still got his perfect attributes. He's only valued at £250. Um, I don't think he's... He's played a few games last season. He played five league games and conceded six goals with a poor rating as well. Pretty poor across the board, actually. And I don't know if that's the reason why he hasn't been playing games, but he's got no valuation. He's now 18 years old. If we look at his um, in-game editor information, his attribute details, he's still got 200 current ability and potential ability. I have no idea what on earth has happened here. Um... I mean, he made his senior debut in 2017, was in the Vanarama National Team Team of the Week, was the under-18s and then under-23 captain in very quick succession. Um, so I really, really don't know what has happened to get him in this situation. If we look at his information, he's content at the club, he's on holiday, no plans for the future. There's no reason for him not to be playing when they've got the best goalkeeper in the world in non-league football and they are not playing him. That makes absolutely no sense. There's nothing else I can do. I can maybe jump up his reputation, but I feel like that defeats the point of this experiment. Um, so for once, an unusual outcome from this kind of experiment. Let's go forward another year, because nothing has really happened here, and see if he's managed to break into the first team. Well, we're another year ahead now, and they finished last season in third place in the Vanarama National League, but not enough to get them promoted. If we have a quick look at the table for... Hartlepool going back to last season. 
then you can see they did just miss out. Well, 10 points in it. They were a decent way clear of fourth place, but it was not enough there to get second place, although I think that was probably the playoffs. Um, and so no promotion for Hartlepool this time around. If we look at their senior squad, though, um, then we can see that he's still not in the senior squad. I'm incredibly confused by what is going on here. Um, he's valued at £275. Still got perfect stats. He didn't even play last season. He played four cup games, conceding three goals, and didn't even play. I have absolutely no idea what is going on. I'm going to go forward another year, though, because there's no point looking at this if he's not playing games. And we'll just have to see, because his contract ends in 2020. It's 2019 now. So his contract will end in a year, and it'll be interesting to see where he ends up, because he still doesn't have that great reputation, which is reflected in his value. Um, so I think maybe there's a bug in the game here where possibly they're not recognising his stats or I've got no idea. But let's go forward another year and see if he's broken into Hartlepool's team. Well, we are another year ahead now and you can see that Hartlepool did finish third for another season. Uh, so still not getting promoted up into the Football League. Scott Maloney, their key player here. Um, and if we have a look at that senior squad, then you can see he is at least in the first team now. Um, perfect stats there, £675 value, his contract is due to end, but he has been playing for Hartlepool now. At some point this season, he became their number one goalkeeper, it would seem, uh, and he kept 14 clean sheets in 22 games. The 7.07 rating is incredibly good. Uh, he seems to be doing very, very well across the board here. Uh, 19 clean sheets in all competitions, just 17 goals in 32 games is very, very impressive um, if we have a look at that national league table and see where they ended up um, last season then you can see they did finish in third place um, Wrexham of all teams getting promoted here um, as they missed out on the top spot by some way if we have a look at the playoff first round uh, they weren't in that and we've just skipped past it if we have a look at the semi-final then Hartlepool did beat Grimsby 1-0 and um, and then in the final, Hartlepool lost to Wrexham at Wembley. Very disappointing there that they weren't able to get the win. But Scott Maloney seems to have finally broken into the first team. His contract ends um, in th two or three days. So presumably he's going to be a free agent, um, which is going to be quite interesting. If we look at his milestones now, you can see when we looked before, had made his senior debut. He's had a few team of the weeks there, and they were runners-up in the FA Trophy in 2020 as well, which is quite important. But inducted into Hartlepool's overall best 11 and season best 11. So clearly become a pretty good player at this point. Runners-up in the FA Trophy is a bit disappointing. They weren't able to win that. So disappointment at Wembley on two occasions, it would seem. Um and missing out on promotion. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens to him and what club he goes to when his contract runs out in a couple of days' time. Well, we're another year ahead now. And as you can see, Hartlepool did win the league and got promoted into Skybet League 2. Um, no sign of Scott Maloney in the club, so I'm assuming that he's not here. If we look at their senior squad, Scott Loach, the only remaining goalkeeper. So we're going to have to look at the transfer history for last season. And you can see Scott Maloney moved to Manchester City for £63,000 in January of this year. So he stayed, must have had his contract extended with Hartlepool, stayed on till January, and then got a move to Manchester City, where he's now valued at £90 million. So that's 63 k definitely representing a bit of a steal. He's now got eight under-21 caps for England as well, so breaking through the England uh, setup. Currently got a broken leg, though. Perfect stats across the board, as you would expect. If we look at his career stats, um, then he did spend a lot of this season at Hartlepool, helping them win the title, keeping 17 clean sheets in 25 league games, uh, 20 clean sheets in 29 games. Absolutely unstoppable in non-league football. He's since moved to Man City, not quite been their first choice goalkeeper by the looks of this if he moved in January and only played 11 games, although he did break his leg, so maybe it's the broken leg that prevented him playing in matches. But you can see he kept seven clean sheets and 11 appearances in all competitions, certainly doing a pretty good job for Manchester City. And if we have a look at his milestones going back, uh, you can see that's where we left off. He was named the Hartlepool captain in 2020, 
and the England under-21s captain, despite being in non-league football, was bought by Man City and then won the Carabao Cup with them, his first major competition. Premier Division Young Player of the Month in March, named in Man City's best 11, and broke the Vanarama National League record for clean sheets in the season with 17, despite leaving in January. That's a nice award to get when you haven't been in the league for five months. Um... But at least now he's got that big move to a big club. He's currently earning 78k with a contract for four years, or four more years at least. Um, And it's going to be interesting to see how he kicks on when he comes back from his broken leg. His bravery has gone down despite his stats being frozen, which I don't understand. Uh, But it looks like everything else is holding up. Maybe that's a reflection of a broken leg. Maybe the game will knock down stats as a result of that as players become more afraid of making daring moves when they pick up injuries. Um... But going to be interesting here, if we look quickly at Man City's uh, senior squad schedule, they may have won more than just the Carabao Cup last season. You can see they're in the Champions League for another season. Um, he joined in January. They were still in the FA Cup by that point, got past Newcastle in the Carabao Cup semi-final, lost to Dortmund in the first leg of their Champions League knockout stage match uh, with Scott Maloney in goal there. Won the Carabao Cup, Scott Maloney between the sticks, let in one goal to Marco Rog, but won the trophy, and they were knocked out of the Champions League and the FA Cup, but had a very strong finish in the Premier League. And if we have a quick look at how that competition finished up, then you can see they did win the title, but he didn't play enough games to get a Premier League trophy because of that broken leg, which is why it hasn't shown up in his stats. So missed out on a Premier League title due to injury. Incredibly unfortunate. But Man City doing the double, he does at least have that first major bit of silverware in the Carabao Cup. So let's go forward one more year to take us to a full five, now that he seems to have hit the ground running, and see how he does in his first full season in top tier football. Well, we are now a year ahead of time, and as you can see, Manchester City did manage to win the Community Shield, beating Chelsea 1-0 there. Um, 2-0 win there, getting quite a lot of wins here. Unbeaten for a very long time. Draw with Leicester in the league, but then picking up loads of wins, including against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. 3-0 against Liverpool, 3-2 against United. Um, This is absolutely unstoppable at the moment. They're winning everything, including away at Stamford Bridge. Another win at home against Atletico Madrid. They lost in the Carabao Cup quarter final, though, so not retaining that competition. Their first defeat of the season, but still unbeaten in the league, letting in very, very few goals. Um, we finally got some uh, data here. Scott Maloney getting a 7.4 rating. Conceded a couple against Stoke, but they managed to hang on for the draw. Lots of nil nils, a 3 1. Another goal not conceded. Um, and then Drew Shakhtar in the first leg away from home. In the second leg, won 3-0, comfortable win there. I mean, this is a lot of clean sheets popping up on the board. Uh, Scott Maloney, definitely their number one keeper here, beating Arsenal um, in the league, but then losing away in the Champions League when it really mattered. They had a man sent off, which didn't help. Um, And then in the return leg, won 4-1 to turn over Arsenal and get themselves into the semi-finals of the Champions League. Still going in the FA Cup, beat Arsenal 2-0 there. So really rubbing it in for Arsenal with a victory there. Scott Maloney keeping the clean sheet. Uh, Won 1-0 against AC Milan in the semi-final. Maloney keeping that clean sheet. And in the return leg, he did the same at the San Siro. 2-0, taking them to the Champions League final. They're in the FA Cup final as well. Won that 2-1. Have they done the league season unbeaten? I think they have, you know. They've gone the entire season unbeaten in the league, so definitely won the Premier League title, only losing in the Carabao Cup and then Champions League quarterfinals. And if we have a look at that final, they lost on penalties. Scott Maloney, unable to be the hero, actually conceded a penalty earlier on. Uh, Loads of penalties in that game. And then Pinamonte, one of my Newcastle heroes, scoring late on to keep buying in it and defeat them on penalties. So Scott Maloney not winning the Champions League, but winning just about everything else. And from the looks of it, doing the entire league season unbeaten as champions with 100 points. Only 29 goals conceded. Uh, One less than United, actually who are disappointing, will be disappointed they didn't win the league with 84 points, but still 16 points off the eventual winners, Man City. Not often that I've seen an unbeaten season in the Premier League, I have to say. So Scott Maloney, maybe this is the added benefit of a great goalkeeper, just not letting in the goals that lose you matches. And when the pressure counts, pulling out the save. So he has done incredibly well there, Scott Maloney. Not their key player, which is interesting. If we look at their senior squad, 
Then you can see he is the number one keeper at the minute, ahead of Edison, worth £36 million. 13 caps for England now. If we have a look at his career stats, and you can see had a pretty great time of it. 36 games in the league, 18 clean sheets. He actually got 32 clean sheets in all competitions across 59 games. That is a sensational return. But not getting that seven-point rating for the first time since his very first season as a footballer. If we look at his milestones and go back to last season, you can see he won the Community Shield, made his international debut against San Marino, um, named in England's best 11, won the Premier League, won the Golden Glove as well, which I expect he will win an awful lot more of them, was a young player of the month in November, uh, won the FA Cup, runners-up in the Champions League, in the Man City best over 11 and their seasonal 11, and broke the Man City record for clean sheets in a season with 32 clean sheets not a bad first full season for our sensational goalkeeper um so that's it for this uh first part of the experiment if you do want to see a second part drop a like on the video let me know you're enjoying the series um and also if there's anything i haven't showed you that you would like to see make sure you let me know down in the comments and subscribe for the next part where we'll go five more years into the future to see what scott maloney can achieve as a player the real question is, can he ever win a golden ball? I think that's never going to happen because I've never seen any of my best players win the golden ball, um, or certainly not outside of the striker position. Uh, so do let me know if you think he'll win the golden ball using the comment section down below. But until next time, see ya.